Chemistry lecture number four, scientific notation. Scientific notation is used quite a bit in chemistry to express measurements, so we're gonna do a quick review of how to do scientific notation. I'm gonna assume that you already are familiar with scientific notation, so this is just gonna be a very quick basic review. Okay, here we go. Let's convert some numbers into scientific notation. So, 25.1, in scientific notation, well, let's see, I have to move this dot over one spot over, so that's going to be 2.51 times 10 to the 1, since I moved the dot one place over. 135.56, hmm, I'd have to move this one two places over, so this is going to be 1.3556 times 10 to the 2. And then 0.52 in scientific notation, hmm, I'm gonna have to move this one one space over to the right, 5.2 times 10 to the negative one. Negative because we're moving the dot to the right this time. All right, 2,502, implicitly there's a dot right here, so one, two, three. So that's gonna be 2502 times 10 to the positive three, since we're moving the dot in this direction. Okay, and then finally, 0 0.003050, let's see, that's one, two, three spaces over, I have to move the dots. So this is gonna be 3.050 times 10 to the negative three, negative because we moved it to the right, three spaces over. All right. Let's do some addition and subtraction with scientific notation. Now when you add numbers in scientific notation, it's oh, go ahead to, uh, you can just go ahead and add them regularly if they're the same power. These are both at the uh, power of two. So 7.35 plus 2.43, that's gonna give me 9.78 times 10 to the, and just since you're adding it, it's just gonna be 10 to the two. Uh, these don't change. Same thing with subtraction, but I'm going to throw you a little bit of a curveball. Oh, we'll get to the subtraction one later. All right, so this is another addition one. Um, oh, wait a minute. This is supposed to be subtraction. I'm sorry. So this is going to be minus. I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. 4.39 minus 2.8 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, well, we can't uh, do anything until they're both at the same power of 10. So we can convert this number to make this something times 10 to the fifth, or we can convert this number and make it something times 10 to the fourth. I'm going to convert this top one. It doesn't really matter. Okay, here we go. So just converting this one, if I move this one over, that would change this number to four. We moved it one place over this way, so we subtract one to make it 10 to the fifth. So this now becomes 43.9 times 10 to the fourth, and then this stays uh, 2.8 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, so now these are at the same power. They're both at the power of 10, and now we can do the operation. 43.9 minus 2.8 gives me 41.1, and just bring down times 10 to the fourth. All right. And then if we want to make it in the uh, number dot notation, this would be the same as 4.11 times 10 to the, let's see, so we had to move the dot over this way. So this becomes 10 to the fifth. Okay, let's try uh, another one. Let's try multiplication and division now. Two times 10 to the fourth times three times 10 to the fifth. Well, the commutative property of multiplication is that it doesn't matter the order in which you multiply it, so we can rearrange these. Two times three, so I'm just gonna pair up these guys, times 10 to the fourth times 10 to the fifth. So we're pairing up these guys. So two times three is six. And then anytime you're multiplying 10 raised to some power, you can just add these things. This is going to be 10 to the fourth plus five. So this becomes six times 10 to the ninth. Okay, that's our answer. So when you're multiplying uh, scientific notation, just add these things. Let's do one more. Six times 10 to the third times four times 10 to the negative fifth. 
So this is going to be, so we can pair these guys up, 6 times 4, and then pair these guys up, times 10 to the 3rd, times 10 to the negative 5th. 6 times 4 is 24, and this is going to be 10 to the 3rd uh, plus negative 5. So this actually becomes 24 times 10. 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. 24 times 10 to the negative 2. And then having it in number dot notation, implicitly there's a dot here. If uh, I move this over 1, this becomes 2.4 times 10, and then this becomes to the negative 1. Okay, let's try a division. 6 times 10 to the 8th divided by 3 times 10 to the 1. Well, we can rewrite this 6 divided by 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by 10 to the 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And then 10 to the 8th divided by 10 to the 1, you subtract it this time. This will become times 10 to the 8 minus 1. So the final answer is 2 times 10 to the 7th. Okay? Let's try another one. 4 times 10 to the negative 5th divided by 2 times 10 to the negative 8th. So this becomes 4 divided by 2 times 10 to the negative 5th divided by 10 to the negative 8th. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then this is going to be 10 to the negative 5th minus negative 8. All right. 2 times 10. So when you want minus minus, that becomes plus. So that's 10 to the negative 5th plus 8. So this becomes 2 times 10. Basically, 8 minus 5 is 3. 2 times 10 to the 3rd. All right. That's our final answer there. All right. Now, you can use the uh, rules of uh, scientific notation for figuring things out. It might be easier to learn how to use your calculator to enter scientific notation to do operations. Uh, scientific calculators have uh, scientific notation functions. And for some calculators, uh, I'm going to show you how to enter scientific notation. And a lot of times it's easier uh, to enter it using the scientific notation functions. Now, to start out with, some calculators have an EXP button on them. For example, uh, this calculator has an EXP button on it. It's right here. And if you use that button, you can enter scientific notation. So suppose I want to enter something like um, 3 times 10 to the negative 8 with this calculator that has an EXP button. And the way I would enter this is, let me turn that on, I would hit 3 EXP. And you see this plus minus button right here? So if I press that to the negative 8. Okay, so 3 times 10 to the negative 8, and this is how it shows up on the screen, 3 with a negative sign, 0, 8. So this 3 dash 0, 8 means 3 times 10 to the negative 8. And you have to use the plus minus button to get this negative sign to appear there. Now, instead of an EXP button, some calculators have a double E button. Let's see if I can find, oh yeah, here's a calculator that has a uh, double E button. And the double E button is right here. So it's the same procedure. If I want to enter 3 times 10 to the negative 8 with the double E button, it's 3, double E. And then here's our plus minus button right here to the negative 8. I don't know if you can see that very well. OK, there it is. All right, so the double E button works the same as the uh, EXP button. Um, now with other uh, calculators, they have a double E function, but it's written above uh, the calculator uh, button. So, for example, this calculator has a double E. Yeah, it's right here. Well, it's hard to see. But above this button right here, 
it says double E. I wonder if you could see it better somewhere else. Well, let's go ahead and do it on this one. So you have to hit the second function button. That's this button right here. So three times 10 to the eighth with a double E printed above a button. So that's three second function. Can you see that very well? Let's try that again. Let's try it again. So we're trying to enter three times 10 to the negative eight. Three second function double E, and then instead of a plus minus button, we have um, a button that looks like this. So we'll press that button right down there. You can see it, so that's the button I pressed, and then eight. So three E minus eight is three times 10 to the eighth. So just one more time, three second function E, and then I press the little minus button in parentheses down here, eight. Okay. And then the uh, TI-84 also has that uh, same thing. Three, second function, and then the doubly button is right here next to the comma, eight. All right. So, on your calculator, if you still can't see it, it looks like, whoops, let's make it to the negative eight. Three, second function, E, and then here's our plus minus button way on the bottom. We're running out of frame here. Minus eight, my apologies if you can't see it, but what appears on the screen is uh, three, E, minus eight. All right, so that's how you enter uh, scientific notation in some calculators. Uh, There's so many different types of calculators and they're coming out with new ones all the time that you're gonna have to learn how to work the functions on your own uh, calculator. Let me show you uh, one more type of function. Uh, some calculators uh, can convert numbers automatically into scientific notation. For example, uh, this one, here it is, above the number five, there's an SCI. So there's the number five and then there's an SCI on it. So if you hit second function and then hit the five, it'll automatically convert any number you have into scientific notation. So, um, I don't know, let me just come up with a number, six, two, zero, zero, zero. So to convert that into scientific notation on this calculator, I hit the second function button and then I hit the number five which has SCI written above it and then bam, 6.205. So that means that it's 6.2 times 10 to the fifth. Okay, and let's see, I think this calculator has the same thing, sort of. On this calculator, there's a button right here and above this button, can't see it too well, but there it says DRG is on the button. And then above the button, it says SCI slash engineering. And whoops, the G. So if I want to convert something into scientific notation, let's do the same thing, 6200. I hit second degrees, and then where it says psi here, you see that? I'm gonna move that over, and I'm gonna press enter. So now the calculator is gonna take any number I uh, or function I put in and convert it to scientific notation. So if I multiply this times one, it gives me the answer in scientific notation. Here it says, it's hard to see. Here it says 6.2 times 10 to the zero three. Hard to see, maybe I can lift it up a little bit so you can see a little bit better. There you go. All right. Well, again, different calculators have different functions, so you're gonna have to learn how to learn the individual quirks of your calculators to get it to work. Not all calculators work the same. Um, be sure to get your own calculator and learn how to use the scientific notation functions. Don't put yourself in a position where you have to borrow a friend's calculator during a test. You might not know how to use it, and you'll panic, and you'll perform poorly on an exam. That's what happens when you borrow a calculator and you don't know how to use the functions on it correctly. All right. 
If you want a PDF uh, file of this uh, lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com and you can get a copy of uh, this lecture that you can download as a PDF file. All right, thanks for watching.